All right, uh, back here with Dr. Kevin for a special Christmas episode. So I guess we might as well just start talking about this weird Christmas we're about to walk into. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it sounds more uh, traumatic where you are. So, I mean, we're a very small family unit here, so we're, uh, we're isolated anyway. So maybe... Perhaps you could explain your circumstances. Oh, sure, sure. More. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to do something really small, like we did for Thanksgiving here, which was just a um, just myself and my two parents, because the uh, the remainder of the family is not very far away. They're just an hour's drive, but they're quite scared of the coof, so they. Uh, mm -hmm. They're wanting to play it well, safe, and they don't really figure that next year is going to be any different from this year, and, well, it might be. So I'm just getting told you're a little quiet in the room, so let me do something. Let's just see if we can remedy that real quick. And uh, people are saying, yeah, it's been tough. Yeah, it's been tough. It's a tough year for everyone. And, you know, be thankful it, that we, we all didn't know each other uh, this time last year, right? So, you know, to, to count your blessings. And, uh, Absolutely. Um, all right, let's do another sound check, see if that works better. Oh, for sure. People. Sounding any better now? Uh, it did sound quiet. So, Can you hear me, chat? Uh, I mean, you're peaking, like your levels are peaking on my meter so it's it's up to the chat how they hear you mm, well i'm not seeing much reply from them so hopefully uh they can let us know if it's uh, good. yeah it's usually a bit of lag so uh we'll see I, I, anyway on, on my recording it's uh it's should be in the right levels if it's uh, a little on the quiet side uh we i mean i'm backing it up right now so there's no worries there okay. so um, I just so let me, let me maybe address the issue with respect to travel and people being somewhat uh, cautious in, in what they're doing right now. My opinion is that that's probably the correct posture to take right now because we still don't know what it is that we're dealing with, and all of the people that have been pushing the uh, the message that, oh, it's only a flu, uh, you know, they've been shown to be ever increasingly wrong. And what are we seeing right now is, and we can go into length of what might be the causal factor for this, but we're seeing very, very drastic mutational changes occur within the last um, week. You know, that no. might actually be one of the best things we can address is this uh, mutation that's just shown up in, uh, what is it, Italy and uh, England? Well, yeah, I think it, it's primarily the UK. So let me try and disambiguate a little bit what I understand going on there. So as I understand it, it's, uh, the UK, with respect to doing sequencing, is as a, as a country, is doing approximately half the world's genomic analysis right now. That's so it could be that it's kind of a false positive that they're finding that particular mutation concentrated in the UK, right? So it's a sampling bias rather than... Um, oh, just due to a... the amount of samples that they're dealing with. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so th this, this sort of plays into uh, a kind of argu argumentation that I've used before, which is, how, why why are the governments operating the way that they are with what should just be essentially uh, a bad flu if it's you know if it's the nearest equivalent we have being um, the, the Spanish flu and I've put forward that um, as it's a lab released agent and we are fairly certain that it goes back to October we there was a report I was seeing pushed out, I think it's on my Twitter, I sort of, someone sent it to me or I retweeted it, but um, the last American vagabond groupies are unhappy that I'm rattling his cage. And um, in 
in, in their particular ideology, everything comes down to the United States having done this to themselves and to the world. And the, the they sent me a story saying that intelligence informed the White House and they informed other countries, NATO and Israel, that something was happening in November. And that fits with what we understand with respect to the uh, the presentation of SARS as it's progressed through the the year, and we know that uh, there's you know there's studies which have looked at the uh, the mutational clock with respect to the reference genome, uh, and how much we can trust that reference genome is up for debate, obviously. Um, but they put it back that the the release was probably around September October. We know um, the Wuhan Institute shut down in that time period uh, in early October, and, and that was just prior to the uh, the military games as well. And to put the uh, particular cherry on that particular turd, uh, EcoHealth, uh, Peter Dazak, and uh, Kevin Olival were uh, apparently uh, in the in the region at the time. So what does what does that mean for for everyone? Again, I would I would say because we're in these unknowns, be careful of people who are coming at you in terms of uh, how assured they are about what it is that they're dealing with. So the the ideologues the plot on the either the Great Barrington Declaration or the Jon Snow shutdown. Um, we can't listen to these people because they've been shown to be wrong time and time again. And um, if, like I say, if you're having regular contact with your parents and your siblings have not, um, this year it just might have to be like that. Um, uh, and like I say, you, know, you want to expand on that, but that's that's how I sort of view it. It's sad, but a necessity. Hmm. Sorry, I got a weird bit of feedback there. I think I fixed it. Something on my end, but uh, yeah, it's, um, I've been playing it safe myself the whole year, and I was just, <clears throat> with the way everything's gone south so quickly, just, I mean, in the past two months, I'd really kind of hoped that uh, I might get to see them before things potentially get very weird here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, uh, we're, we're mere, mere bottom feeders, Evan. We don't, we don't have the, oh no, we're not. We, you know, we're, there, there are people obviously much worse off than we are, but um, we, we can only respond to essentially the intelligence that comes through our computer screens and the, the it, it would be it would be a shame if you've spent a year you know erring on the side of caution you've um, you know hopefully you've received just you know a small enough inoculum that you're getting that you've over the worst of it and it should be no problem and you know, you come into the next year and we wait to see what's coming down the pipeline. Um, but that that line of reasoning has to be put into an ever more complex picture of, and did, you, did we speak about this last time where we were speaking about how uh, particularly Peter Dazak had been caught through freedom of information? Well, yeah, actually, emails. that was one of the main points of our last conversation. Oh, okay. So th there was a second freedom of information release that came after. Did we speak about that with Ralph Barrick and John Epstein at EcoHealth? We did touch on EcoHealth. I don't know if we got into the second Freedom of Information release. Okay, so um, this was basically Ralph Barrick's email from uh, Duke University. Uh, he's the lab that trained Sheng Li Shi and these uh, his emails, I mean, there's a huge stack of them, but the, the 
point was, or, or, or the takeout from that email was, and you know, let me just see if I can find it because it's a it's a critical thing. I wasn't. I, I know we were supposed to be talking more about vaccines and perhaps the sort of social disturbance, but the um, that's going to be way back in my feed. But the 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 gist of this email between Epstein, who is the I want to say he's the vice president of EcoHealth. And let's just remind people who EcoHealth is. They're a non-profit NGO that sits in between uh, government and these off, uh, off nation, off, uh, out of sort of oversight um, research labs. And it's basically funneling money to them under the guise of being a, a green, um, ecological group and they go under the the, uh, the auspices of being ecological medicine medicine for mankind's interaction with ecology and basically you know it sort of feeds into and i'm sure we're pretty sure we touched on world economic forum last time because i think that's where a lot of the oh, yeah we absolutely going. did yeah so um following that we get another and i didn't think we'd be topping that at all this year and the, I might just, it's probably just better if, uh, right to no, right to no, uh, USA. Let's just try to do that. I don't have it right now. Uh, yeah, so do, 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 do. I'm going to find the link for people. And uh, in this email between EcoHealth and uh, why do I get to their page? Man, like the 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 cover up of this is gross. So you have to really keep a track on. You can't rely on normal uh, searches anymore because they're they're working so hard to sort of cover up this um, th this nefarious activity that they're doing. But I will uh, pull this up for the people because it's so important. But the gist of the email being that. Um, EcoHealth contacts Ralph Barrick, who's the international expert on doing these uh, SARS type research and making, so they became famous for making the original SARS, if you like, the, a, a pathogenic version. And then the, all these sort of pseudo type uh, viruses were, and they'll express the spike on something like HIV. And you know, there's, there, there are a whole bunch of uh, mechanisms and methods out there. And I can, uh, have I ever taken HIV and strapped uh, other proteins onto it? From, never. I can only read about it and say, well, I, I kind of understand the science of it. But this this lab, uh, Ralph Barrick's lab and institute, sits very much at the center of what we're having to deal with, just as much as the Wuhan Institute of Virology. EcoHealth and... Um, Ralph Barrick, so an, e an email comes from EcoHealth Ralph Barrick saying, uh, there's a question on the DARPA grant saying, how do we address to the public information about the use of dual, we're doing dual use research. And in normal English, that translates to how do we inform the plebs that we're doing uh, what could essentially be construed as weapons research, and we're doing it um, it's, it's off site and therefore is not privy to the restrictions that were put on it 50 years ago. Okay, but, you know, there was a very, very strong push and that came from the United States to make sure that uh, bioweapons were sort of contained as a, as a measure in the game theory equation of, of sort of mutually assured destruction because it was an ever sort of, you know, you circle the drain because it just becomes cheaper and cheaper to do biological research, whereas, you know, enriching uranium, as the Iranians are finding out, is a uh, is a horribly complex process requiring uh, engineers and all sorts. Whereas, literally, uh, as a competent postdoc with a hundred thousand dollars could begin uh, the experiments that they need to be doing to make these agents that are very obviously so disruptive. If we're to believe the 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 current statistics we have. 
so I, I went off on a little <laughs> and I, I stopped looking for the uh, the email itself but um yeah so that's pretty much where we're at this timeline now where eco health is literally free foyer caught with their hands in the cookie jar of not only uh trying to uh corral the narrative which is a huge ethical breach but are now caught in doing dual use research off-site in sketchy labs in china not just china uh in various other places around the world as well oh, that's just um, creepy uh so uh, evan we do have an issue my end where you kind of you cut in and we don't hear the beginning of what it is that you're saying so oh, i was just saying that's an incredibly creepy thing yes yes and um it's so so bizarre that you can't if it would like I say we said this last time if it was a book a novel that you picked up you would just be like yeah that's it, you know it just doesn't make uh any sense right now or it's too you know it's it's just not credible right it, it yeah, just it's, doesn't it's basically uh, all too contrived it's mm. it's not even a good story it's overplayed you could even say yeah yeah i, I th actually i think overplayed is a uh, a good way of um, of putting it, but I'm honing in on that email right now. But um, well, this is a good story. So, uh, Eco Health. Oh, I think I actually pulled this. Pete Day's like Eco Health Alliance has hidden almost forty million in Pentagon funding and militarized pandemic science. There you go. So it's not the email, but there's probably has a link to that let me just put that in the chat and i'll send it to you just on the discord link that we have so um, i've got the chat up here so i can copy that over all right uh, i i put it in I'll, I'll make sure i put any link we put in the in, in the private discord as well and actually if you, you're on our discord saying it'll be in the youtube if you if you lose something um so uh, yeah that's uh, uh that's a sizable sum oh yeah it's it's uh and it's just part of it right we we know that eco health has had over a hundred million dollars and keeps receiving more and more grant money peter dayzak's twitter account is cock a hoop at the idea of the biden presidency because right now he's he's chief suspect number one Right. I signed a letter, I put it out on my Twitter yesterday, uh, shout out to Billy Bostickson on Twitter for getting it together, just, you know, that we want to petition the, the uh, what use it will do, I, I have nothing right now because things have got so out of hand and the, the laboratory in China has had one year to, um, to tidy up. Oh yeah, and you can be, you can be completely assured that if there is, if there was any evidence there, it's long gone now. Mm, yes, and uh, long gone. Um, uh, so much so that the BBC were in. So that's today. This that report is today. So that's another link that we should probably put up. But uh, the the BBC. Uh, doing an investigation where they just tried to go around Yunnan, where the bats that are on uh, that are in the scientific record have been published from, and the Chinese have blocked off all the roads and they're following them everywhere. So all these people that want to keep saying, "Bam, it's the U.S. that's done all this," blah 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 blah. Um, well, don't you know? Chinese... Don't you know that Donald Trump himself forged these uh, these genetic abominations in his own personal gene lab? <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, this is, uh, but this is how people are, th are thinking. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed that it sort of happened in the background on my sort of quieter channel. But uh, this week, you know, I've been fighting online with, uh, do you know, the last American vagabond. Sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. So he, he kind of sort of plays out to be the sort of alternative. It's a big channel, like a hundred thousand uh, subs, and uh, it's part of. Uh, Mint Press 
and Whitney Webb is all involved in that, and they're all linked to Skull and Bones, John Kerry. There's there's lots of sketchy connections, and they carry a lot of water for the Chinese Communist Party by always being that uh, that news group that's always pointing to the corruption behind the U in, in the U.S. Mm. and never at other countries. Oh, I mean, you know, they go after Israel in this particular case on their channel. Wow, ah, you know, fair enough. That's an easy target, right? Um, calling out the Chinese. And, um, and, of course, we have to call out what's, what is the issue in the United States, which in my mind is not so much government, but it's the corporate world that wants to protect China. Oh, certainly. Yeah, the to... other government. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> the real government maybe right. is the, the, the better way of putting it. But the, the, the fact that we can... Um, well, uh, we're able to find these bits of information on a, on a daily, weekly basis. Right? So... Um, it's astonishing to me that, as we said last week, that we, uh, no, it wasn't last week, it was a few weeks ago, right? Uh, two weeks ago, two, yeah. Two, three weeks ago. Uh, yeah. Um, but we, uh, we were not aware of this, right? And we did nothing to sort of prevent what's going on. Um, and the problem with this line of reasoning is, is that you run very, very quickly into the domain of what is the most fevered ends of the internet, which is, oh, it's all about the Great Reset, it's, the, the, it's, it's all satanic, they eat babies, blah, 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 right? And, you know, I can't prove or disprove any of that, but I, I'm of the strong opinion that if we're to try and address these issues and problems, because the one thing they do fear is that there's way more of us than there is of them that we have to we have to have a narrative that's uh, bulletproof in, in respect to the evidence oh certainly. in respect to the art and in addition to that too you know even if there is something to some of these outlandish claims even if they all turned out to be real you you can't open with that it's like you can't just be like mm. these people are eating babies and worshiping satan that's mm. It's not much of an, I mean, it's a hell of an icebreaker, but I don't think it's going to get you where you're trying to be. And uh, I think this is what people have a real problem with, and it's played on uh, to a massive extent at the moment. The, um, the, the sort of quasi-military-industrial complex intelligence gathering operations that uh, that guy who went on and ranted at uh, Alex Jones... Patrick Berge was saying that the, the all, all these organizations that exist and they're literally playing key individuals that you know if you have a hundred thousand followers then they will feed you and and nudge you in a particular direction it's the same in it's the same across most countries right uh, all countries that's that's a, that's a, let's put it that way unless they uh, unless they're so um, so free that they've foregone the internet, but they're probably the local warlord will decide what it is you do uh, and don't do. But the well, I, I mean, you, I'm not I'm not in America, dude, and I'm not seeing the worst ravages of this playing out. I mean, you're you're better talking about that side than than I am. Well, I mean, if I'm to be entirely honest, it really isn't all that bad. And where I am is probably one of the best places to be because we've actually stayed open and people have just largely tried to be responsible. Um, one of the joys of a red state. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess. And But the, the, the problems with the red states is that they've taken this very freedoms type uh, approach. That's my impression. Um... And I think I've found the link for so this is the email for uh, Ralph Barrick. So uh, here's the link. Uh, I'll read it. 
I'll read it out. But this is one of your uh, chief, um, well, the world experts in in the world on this. So uh, this is from US Right to Know. Uh, items from coronavirus expert Ralph Barrick's emails posted on December 14th. Uh, Sinath, uh, I think, <laughs> I'm not even going to, Suranaya Yan, Yanan, Suranaya Yanan, maybe. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, I'll just link it. That's uh, that's quite a name. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously of uh, Indian heritage, but um, fair play to this man. And look, fair play to everyone. That um, if you're on Twitter and you're in the social media and you're you're putting in hours and time to address all the all these uh, issues and problems, a, a salute to everyone. I mean, I I kind of feel like I'm I, you know I I do my bit, but a lot of the time mine is just geared towards taking down uh, stupidity on the internet rather than the 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 dealing with the politics and the the molecular biology, because it's not in my domain. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> we, we would be in a, a very dark place right now, I think, if it wasn't for these people that do, uh, who do put this time in. And yeah, I think, you know, if we're gonna be grateful, I'd be grateful for the fact, you, if you manage to get some family time, Christmas, you grab those family members and at the same time, you you say a prayer to thank all the people that put time in to try to hold people to account uh, in, in this, and that and that includes people like you, Evan. Uh, you know, it's 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 not Joe Rogan, but it's putting information out there, right? Well, we all try and do what we can. You're right. So let's let's go through this. Uh, web page so this was like I said, in the link so the items from the barrack email so tracy mcnamara professor of pathology at western university of health sciences in pomona california wrote on march 25th 2020 the federal government has spent over one billion dollars in support of the global health security agenda to help developing nations create the capacity to detect report respond to pandemic threats an additional 200 million dollars was spent on the predict project via US aid looking for emerging viruses in bats rats and monkeys overseas and now the global viron project wants one and a half billion dollars i've got a link to the global viron project uh, just give me a few minutes I'll, I'll look at that in a minute so uh, i think that is uh jonah maze um, that's the Global Viron Project, and uh, just for people that want to take notice, and um, well, let, let me finish, and then I'll, I'll get to a very, very important point. So, um, and now the Global Viron Project wants one and a half billion dollars to run around the world hunting down every virus on the face of the earth. They will probably get funding, but none of these programs have made the taxpayers safer right here at home. This is the, this is the crux of the issue, actually. That all these programs, which are supposed to be about ecological health, et cetera, when they're going out and getting these samples and bringing them back, and they're not just studying them, they're deliberately doing these gain of function studies, right? Uh, under, under, the, under the auspices of, well, we, it's for science and we're trying to work out what it is that they're doing. And they haven't detected anything. And I, I say this the first gain of advantage that the current SARS CoV 2 strain got was then grabbing the bass, sticking a swab in its ass, and taking it back to the labs where they were studying on it. That was the, before they even did any biochemistry, the fact that they physically transported it. That's enough. That's your first gain of function, right? And the, and the virus is going to adapt to the new environment that it gets put into. That's what they do. So it goes on, Dr. Jonathan Epstein, Vice President for Science and Outreach at EcoHealth Alliance, sought guidance for a quest from the US Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, about communicating potentially sensitive dual use information in March 2018. So I'll put that link in the chat there and uh, I'll put it uh, here for you. And, um, uh, let's just read that email. All right. 
I'll make sure I'm going to for anybody that's listening on this end as well, because there's, well, this is interesting stuff. Oh, it's fascinating. And again, this is like, they, they managed to get away with 9-11, but literally we're following them day by day at this point as they tried to squirm and get out of uh, what, what is something that's exponentially worse than 9-11. Well, I, 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 you know, we haven't started droning wedding parties uh, in the name of uh, SARS-CoV-2, but uh, I would imagine something more terrible is coming down the pipeline. So the email begins. So it's on my screen. People that are listening, I'll just zoom that in a little. Uh, to Ralph Barrick, rbarrick at email.unc.edu. So that's an official uh, university email from John Epstein at Epstein, ecohealthalliance.org. And how, how amusing is it, Evan, that we have uh, one Epstein involved in the uh, biggest, what would you call it, the uh, pedophile uh, honey traps ever, ever recorded uh, in history uh, used to blackmail politicians and industry leaders on one hand and another Epstein in the uh, organization that's involved in the biggest science story, of, of, so, so, social science story of our history, almost. Well, you know, just <laughs> and I'm not saying say they're related. Uh, it makes you think it runs in the family. <laughs> right, and I'm not saying they are related, but... Um, they're related at a particular level, and I'll leave it up to the audience to imagine uh, where that level would be, considering that we know that uh, the first Epstein was a known Mossad agent, along with Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, Maxwell was Mossad, um, like the father. The father is buried on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. Uh, so, you know, right? So you well, just you try can't and think trust where the any intelligence could be. agencies these days. They seem to all be up to something and working with someone they shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, look, that's statecraft to to some extent. But um, it, if we're going to get to um, something approximating holding people to account, then we have to get past this issue of the how would you call it what we, we need to be calling a spade a spade right and where we see and keep catching these particular um elements and individuals we have to we have to dig into that and look and and so this will come more into where i'm going to take this conversation the subject of this email is dual use safety language dual use so basically meaning that it can be used in a civilian or a military sense. Now, DARPA is an entirely military-based organization. Trust me, they do not have your best interests at heart. Yeah, they didn't know. make the internet for us to all be looking at cat videos. They made it so that there was a continuity of uh, communication between, you know, all the military branches and bases and all that. Uh, yes, and it turns out it's become the ultimate spy tool for intelligence gathering. Who would have thought? Right? But anyway, the email goes on. Hi, Ralph. It's, it's a very uh, informal uh, language. DARPA wants a written section on communicating dual use information. Do you have some written text you could send me? And he then lays out what DARPA are asking. Uh, DARPA asks, a communication plan that addresses content, timing, and the extent of distribution of potentially sensitive dual-use information. The plan must also address how input from DARPA, other government, and community stakeholders will be taken into account in decisions regarding communication and publication of potentially sensitive dual-use information. Cheers, John. <laughs> And that's John H. Epstein, DVM, MPH, PhD, Vice President for Science and Outreach, Eco Health Alliance, that small nonprofit green organization that you beastly right wingers shouldn't be looking at because it is 
a green non-profit NGO and how dare you impugn their reputation uh, <laughs> as it stands at the moment. So um, it goes on, EcoHealth Alliance paid Dr. Barrick an undisclosed sum as an honorarium in January 2018. Let me just explain an honorarium to people that don't work in academia for some people. So every time I get asked to go and give talks, um, it's been a year now, so it's actually a year today since I've done it. And the last one I did, I went to Korea and got SARS and messed me up and nearly killed me. Right? And that's why I'm doing this. Uh, maybe, maybe, who knows, maybe I did uh, cock it as I was, uh, this is all just the fevered dreams of me. Um, uh, <laughs> well, for what it's worth, I'm pretty sure I'm real, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, maybe maybe you I'm your Jiminy tell, Cricket, right? who knows? <laughs> So um, every time I go and give a talk and, you know, you, you, it gets advertised among the department and then usually people who are interested want to uh, talk with you and then you get taken out for lunch or dinner and, you know, depending on the type of meeting, the more extravagant it will be if it's a multi-day sort of affair. And if you give a talk, uh, the head of the department will come round and he'll say thank you very much and uh, here's uh, here's the photograph and you'll be passed an envelope and usually when I give a talk let's say there would be I don't know on average about seven hundred dollars I would say every time I would give a talk cash and it sort of goes under the table as you know your sort of time no one claims it no one no one reports it or anything and it just gets written off in the expenses of the department and the uh the the point being that uh when eco health alliance has paid barrick an undisclosed sum in january 2018 um i'm gonna be pretty sure it wasn't just seven hundred dollars <laughs> especially when this organization is dealing in hundreds of millions of dollars and they're engaged in dual use research and this dual use research doesn't even what they're talking about here doesn't even relate to what's been going on in the Wu, uh, in china and the wuhan institute of virology and i'm pretty sure did we look at this last week where uh eco health have a project going on in georgia and uh just on russia's uh, southern border, not Georgia in the USA, where they've yeah. been given six and a half million dollars. Yeah, we did talk about that actually. <laughs> we did, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, the so anyway, so dear Dr. Barrick, I work with Dr. Koresh. Oh, Dr. Koresh is another one that we need to get into uh, around eco health, etc. He recently sent you an honor uh, honorarium from Eco Health Alliance. A finance department is asked for you to fill out a W-9 for our records. Please let me know if there are any questions. And yeah, I filled out a few W-9s in my time going to give talks in the US. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a normal procedure and depending on your status, it, it'll, it'll ramp up. And that doesn't even include, like I say, these are the ones that are on the record, right? It doesn't include how they're going to jig grants or, 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 or put grants together such that things feed into each other. And there's like this chain reaction with the research as it sort of piles forward through time and picks up ever more bits of data that they're able to use. So the, the Freedom of Information release goes on. Invitation to U.S. National Academy of Science, Engineering and Medicine NASEM at the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Science, CAWS, US China Dialogue and workshop, workshop on the challenges of emerging infections, laboratory safety, global health security, and responsible conduct in the use of gene editing in viral infectious and disease research, Harbin, China, January 8th to the 10th, 2019, November 2018, January 2019. So just uh, just think about or, or construct in your mind what that title is telling you. For all these people, everyone that we've peripherally arranged around this network is meeting in China the year that 
we have this outbreak. And the outbreak was approximately six or so months later. EcoHealth's Peter Dayzak and Kevin Olivelle are in Wuhan in September, October time. This, this, this is how arrests have not been made. I don't know. I mean, this is really down to the American public right now. I'm in Japan and I'm not an American citizen, but there must be some American citizen that can get the, the intelligence to someone. Make a citizen's arrest for God's sakes, right? And and just say, you know, what the hell is going on here? I really don't know Who if those them? work out too very well. Well, well, this is um, this is always the case, right? With you know, people, we are dealing with a, a a broken system, a system that we know is corrupt, right? That will crush you if you're not one of the privileged class. And I will take this conversation to hook towards who a lot of that privileged class is, because we're well, it's this is the continuation of our discussion. From the last time where we we began to talk about the world economic forum and how it ties into the great reset etc and uh, oh thank you very much oh yeah absolutely and i as a matter of fact just today i uh, told a friend of mine just uh you know if you want to know what they're up to you can actually just go to their website and uh, they'll tell you yeah they, they brag about it, right? They're literally out in front in your face with it. And uh, what they rely on is just people's, uh, one, disinterest doesn't doesn't fit what they're interested in. Oh, that science geek stuff. Man, that's, uh, where's, where's my beer and football, right? Oh, I want to go down the titty bar. Whatever other sordid distraction that most people use to uh, amuse themselves. Right. It's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a very, very disturbing set of affairs that we've been um, manipulated into, the, into this position right now, that, and it looks very cold and calculated. Yeah, but that's, that's a fairly reasonable observation. I mean, so, and taken with uh, some of the other thoughts of the day, you know, it does... It tracks, you could say. Yes, and uh, they can't keep just saying it's a coincidence. These people, the Barracks, the the Dayzaks, the Epsteins, the name the Koresh, who I talked about, he's another one uh, who uh, you should look into. There's there's so many of them in the domain of public. Uh, academia and and this sort of research environment and this can bring us to perhaps where we would uh talk about you know i know you wanted to talk about vaccines and i have to put my hands up and say uh, i'm not an epidemiologist i've have i ever given a vaccine no not even to monkeys i've never given vaccines it was just done by the vets okay <laughs> the only the only experience i've had with vaccines is being on the end of them Right, and generally, my opinion of them is that they're uh, uh, somewhat necessary evil. No, and I, I largely agree with you. And in addition to that, I've seen, I've heard horror stories, and I've heard refutations of those horror stories, and I've heard completely reasonable plans about how vaccinations could be done, and there are no horror stories. So. Yeah, there's that's um, a whole, a whole nother. The, the American, the American environment for vaccines, is a disaster, in my mind, because of this lack of indemnity that's been given to the pharmaceutical companies. Well, that's just them able to gouge the, the, <laughs> the American public with ever more bills that get paid through insurances and ever increasing premiums and they're just stacking these vaccines onto kids where when i was a kid he probably got polio and a couple of other jabs and that was it but yet you know that was nearly 50 years ago 
Oh, yeah, I think and, I got a total of six or maybe nine throughout all of my youth. If and, that. If that, right? Um, and the, the, the situation in, in, in which we're operating now is way, way beyond what I would define as scientifically reasonable, okay? Um... Yes, measles is kind of nasty. Yes, chickenpox is irritating. Yes, all these things are um, can have sequelae that are unpredictable in in a lot of people. And yes, measles kills a lot of people in the third world. But it might be the case that clean water would fix that problem just as easily as uh, them generating ever more vaccines. But water doesn't generate income not yet it doesn't but uh if you have to believe the head of uh nestle uh, who, who declares that uh water shouldn't be a human right okay <laughs> then uh who, who knows um who knows where we're, where we're going and you know, someone's just put in the chat california requires the most childhood vax and look at how screwed up those kids are great point um, absolutely california is uh California is an example of how not to be. Mm. And Mark from Who's Tonic Live is saying measles is bad. Stuffing a gallon of vaccines into a baby is also bad. Yes, I agree. And I, I say I say this again and again, right? It's a cal it should be a calculated cost, like right? risk benefit uh, analysis of what it is that you're doing. Okay. Now, I think in the current circumstances in most fir first world countries. Uh, I'm not sure how long the U.S. will remain such, but um, it might just be that we don't need the vaccines because the medicine is so good now that we can we can deal with uh, the, the 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 symptoms that arise. Well, you know, a perfect perfect example of that is uh, the American Medical Association. They reversed their initial. Uh, block on using hydroxychloroquine in treatment of uh, uh, COVID. I never really announced much about it, and it was it was a bear to find the info. I had to spend about an hour doing research to actually find it because Google doesn't want you to know that there are uh, you know other treatments out there for some silly ass reason. Mm, and as I've just got my main channel back, I'll be uh, circumspecting how I how I talk about these things. So. Uh, Malarials, sheep dip, uh, other approaches to uh, tracking and dealing with uh, diseases that we've always, we've co-evolved with them, right? And that's why, you know, vaccines were understood to be uh, something of a benefit 70 years ago, right? Because there were pe people that suffered, right? Even in wealthy countries. Um, do I think the answer is to go on these tirades like Judy Mikovits has done writing, uh, books like Plague of Corruption? I absolutely don't. I really, really don't because it's, what that does is it feeds into the, and, and the, it feeds into the emotions often of those who have been harmed the most. And if your child has been vaccine injured and you know it, and you've had no recourse, and you know that your baby just wasn't quite right after the last shot that it received. And you have, you missed that week, two week window that they give you to say, hey, something's not quite right. And then how do they go about measuring it is another factor. But I, I, I don't think the, the ravings of that particular community have helped the current circumstances that we're in. In fact, it's feeding into it uh, and making it easier for the, let's say, if this is silent weapons for silent wars and next generation warfare that we're, we're sitting in. And I think there's a lot of strength to that particular uh, hypothesis. These people have been gamed by these machine-like technologies behind the scenes that are aggregating and calculating odds with respect to moving pieces around the chessboard and it's pretty it's, I, I think 
it would be very, very hard to argue against the narrative that the prize jewel in the um, in the subverters uh, playbook goals, the, the 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 game goals, if you like, is the the takedown of the United States. I and certainly seems... wouldn't disagree with that take. It seems like that's. Uh... I mean that's that's what anybody that wants to have power wants, you know, to to have the <clears throat> the last real superpower. Mm. And so the question then becomes, well, who is it that we're dealing with? Okay, so I, I sort of alluded to it at the beginning, where I spoke about, well, we can we can uh, whether we can find direct familial relationships between these two Epsteins. There is a level where we do find a relationship. Now, when we look at the uh, vaccine companies, okay, 99% of them have, at the CEO level, members who you could say are very, very closely genetically linked. Now, again, this is not a, this is not a call to be saying uh, all of this particular haplogroup should be under observation and, and uh, rounded up. But there's, it's not a correlation that you can just ignore at this stage because the, uh, the, the consequences that have been rolled out onto the population, the, the, the worldwide population, are just beyond compare. The only difference I see right now than 75 years ago is just we haven't started flattening cities wholesale with nighttime air raids, but we've got people locked down like it's nighttime air raids. And the problem is, in the context of, well, a bio warfare agent has been released. And this is, look, you want, you want an idea of how inane and stupid a lot of America is, right? Um, so I was sort of, for fun, I sort of take down uh, sort of stupid uh, channels. And I'm, I'm sort of, tackling this one i don't want to you can go to my channel you can see who they were but there's they, they had someone on who was uh, sort of co-hosting a debate with uh Mikevitz and some other individual that maybe was blaming his cancer on vaccine so um correlation is not causation in that particular instance and so they've got to be careful about what it is that they're putting out but i've had interviews with sarah westall and sarah westall took my information and was so ideologically driven that she, I had two interviews with her. The first where I said, I sort of came out publicly and I said, the people need to watch out because this agent will attack your nervous system. And because we don't know the providence of it, you should take care because it's not, it's perhaps not just a flu like we think it is. Okay. That's how I sort of first emerged onto the internet. And then basically I had to say, and it's on, you can go look on my channel and look for uh, interviews with Sarah Westall. I need to uh, sort out where I've done interviews, etc. I tried to get, I keep my titles ambiguous because I just keep getting struck all the time for speaking in this manner, right? And yeah, I cut close to the edge with the humor and, uh, you know, unvarnished <laughs> and um, my, they're my opinions and uh, I stand by them. But um, when it comes to dealing in the facts around this, this particular issue. I think I've been fairly consistent and uh, a good uh, a good indicator of where things are going. And Sarah Westall uh, literally argued with me with, with what was supposed to be uh, a interview about me. I think I think the topic was supposed to be that it's looking more and more like a, a lab released agent. I think that's what we were supposed to be talking about. And I was, I was saying that you are deep because you're dealing with this unknown, take, take control of your environment, stop wearing, uh, or, or, or put a mask on when you're in a place where you don't know who it is that's been around you. And you might go and sort of, cause chaos by spreading uh, somewhere else, uh, the disinfection somewhere else. And there are these entities poised to try to take advantage and attack the United States from all angles. So from the Chinese perspective, they have this principle of unrestricted warfare. Well, 
Okay, but there's other groups and entities that just have uh, <laughs> the, the principle of uh, uh, trying to dominate through their through their own ideology, and whether it's playing jizya through uh, if you're uh, a, a dhimmi in uh, Islamic lands to uh, being on the receiving end of some chutzpah from uh, other Abrahamic. Uh, Brothers, there's there's always this element that's that's at play, and if you don't protect yourself in that environment and you go out naively, then it's you're causing, and in, in in a sense, you become part of that weapon because you become part of the chaos-inducing agent. And Sarah Westall sat there and said, "Masks don't work." People should be eating C60 fullerene oil, which they're buying en masse from China um, without realizing that, you know, your body has to have some um, antioxidant capacity in order for, you know, for certain metabolic pathways to run. And they will try to sell you nano silvers, etc. And this literally was the, uh, in my mind, so you can listen to Sarah Westall talk and she'll, she'll make the jump from uh, going anti-mask to saying that there's a satanic uh, conspiracy afoot and what all that entails. And, yeah, and some, so, of the, some of the jumps that I've seen some of these people take with, with their ideas on things are really, it, it almost smacks like the flat earth stuff. Mm. Yeah, and well, in a sense, what I would argue is, is that you've been uh pushed into a situation where um the it, it looks like the machine playing you right and the problem is when you start to get into the real physics of what it is that we're dealing with and the neuroscience of what it is that we're dealing with and what's causality etc and <laughs> what what's coming from the future and going to the past and what it is now that's actually a very very deep question and why why are we having this conversation at this moment right and if we're able to conceptualize that there's these uh, that the, the, these interactions at very fundamental levels okay so you know the probability theorems about what, what how matter is made and um how we uh, how we interact with it uh, emergent phenomenon in the in the sense of consciousness then those theories get pulled into these AI networks as well. And what, what does that mean, an AI network? Well, literally, it's just nodes in a network that's holding bits of information that's looking for reinforcement or quiescence in that network and is, is making appropriate responses within its particular uh, specialization. So you could use the, the example of the, the body. Sometimes, you need to relieve yourself. But you could be in the middle of a busy shopping street, which means you don't just squat down and pinch off a deuce, right? You control yourself. But the, the networks themselves down at the lower level know that there's a problem and they keep firing, right? And in, in a machine level type interaction, what you've got is you've got the equivalent of, of these same things. So the people have been asking, well, how come the, the, you know, the, the economies have shut down? Yet the, the stock market just keeps flying along. How does that happen? Bitcoin is flying up to tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gold is at uh, absolutely record levels as well. And um, <laughs> as I was just saying in the chat, I think Q is an AI program. Uh, in, in effect, it is because what, it, what you're looking at is you're looking at the uh, the emergence of organized behavior at, at the social level. And a lot of that is now being controlled through uh, these deep learning networks, right? Through nudging information. It, it, it's implicit and baked into these, the, these systems that we have to operate in. The, 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 the way to get around them is just that you have to withdraw as much as possible. So now what people should be asking themselves is, how much is that job in the cubicle actually worth versus the time that you could be spending with your family right now? Really be asking yourself, and 
find out what that really means to you okay how much have you been tricked and this this uh, especially for girls and women okay who who are separated from family what have, what are you aiming for where have you been played what how much debt did they get you into and again what happens is is that okay we get round and suddenly we're talking about these very very complex societal institutions for example banks the, the people that dish out student loans certainly who who holds uh, and this is this is the problem where people uh, often i find struggle to make the conceptual leap okay so that those organizations are entities okay it means that they have particular behaviors and if you were to sort of extrapolate out and look down on it like you were looking out of an airplane window you would see the uh blackrock or federal reserve or the european central bank or the city of london you would see them engaged in particular patterns of activity right so you would look at that and say oh that looks organized and therefore that would that seems to imply something approximating um intelligence and, and uh, uh it's 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 not the random randomness that we associate with uh you know if you point uh the, the classic being the brain is a good example. If you just put an electrode into a passive brain, okay, you get the equivalent of what is pink noise, which is just, it's random until there's, a, there's, a, there's an event that needs to take place. And then you start to see networks start to fire and trigger together to, to move you towards a particular behavior. And um, we're, we're now, like I say, we're in a position that is, I don't have good explanations for it anymore. I used to have this conversation a few years back and explain out to people, you know, the comparisons between uh, what the brain is doing, what consciousness is doing, what's actually emergent or what's around you, what's the history that you can see uh, with respect to what you uh, associate in your environment. And then coming to the understanding that in a way consciousness is embedded very, very deeply in, in, in all these aspects and everyone kind of has a slightly different take on it. Right, because because your 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 inertial frame of reference is different. Like we we kind of so myself and yourself, we're having this discussion because our inertial frames of reference are close enough that we can have a conversation and agree about most things. Right, so so it's not a you're not going to we're not going to war. It would be the other extent. So going to war is the it's the expression of consciousness in another extreme state. Right. Certainly. But if I'm not making sense, please stop me because I don't want to be sort of doing. No, I don't. I don't think you're that. you're not losing me, and I don't think you'd be losing any of my audience. So I don't. I don't think okay. I need to really interject, interject here or anything. Okay. So um, that conversation was way way easier a couple of years ago to sort of make these comparisons. These were things that people understood, and now what you're finding is that in my mind, it's the rubber meeting the road. Right, where the the how good is the theory that we were building up about what the role of mind and consciousness is and what it is that we see emergent around us? How did we get towards all these events coming together to bring us to this point? And there you get into, you know, so this is gets into the domain of sort of Jungian psychology and, and collective unconscious and what is synchronicity, et cetera, et cetera. All the, you know, these are, these are things that, are, that these are not mysteries, right? These were things that were relatively well understood when I was a teenager and trying to learn about the world. And Jung was there as a, as a sort of stock, uh, as a principal component of the domains that, that I had an interest in, which was the, the, biology the brain the mind and of course reading it at teenage years a lot of it doesn't make any sense right it, it's kind of gibberish in a way when when you're talking about things like archetypes and how these are represented in dream states etc but then you, once you begin to start to unpack it all and you then have to you then start have to asking well what is this shared experience that we're having how close is it to from dream reality for as a hypothetical 
to what we see as like me hitting and knocking on the table and saying, damn, that feels real. Right? I, I can hurt myself if I hit it much harder. Right? And where's the boundary between the two? Is it is it a hard boundary or is it a little fluid? OK, and are we moving into an age where the technology has got so good that we can interact with it with a degree of precision? And this is where I've I can walk people up to this point with very sound neuroscience principles. But now we're at this point with, whoa, you know, if, if this is my am I contributing to this emergent state? Well, you know what? Um, Right, you know, if I'm if I'm brutally honest with myself, I used to love playing Left 4 Dead. It was my favourite game in 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 all my life, from growing up to uh, to to now. Right, I don't I think gaming peaked with the zombie games Left 4 Dead, where you sort of had this uh, community um, or, or sort of group play, and you were sort of trying to get through stages and 3D shoot 'em up. If you're unfamiliar with it, and oh, no, zombie, no, I can sort appreciate of, that. That's uh, it's. It's a novel concept at the time. Right. And um, the, and I've got older, and so I just don't, I don't have time for games. You know, if, if I can manage a bit of Roblox with my kids, it's a miracle. And um, they can, they play, they play between each other. And I don't feel that they, they just need me on Overwatch to make sure that who, who it is that they could be interacting online with. That's, that's where I sort of uh, see my role there. But the question I have to come down to, which is this metaphysical, and I don't want to use metaphysical because that's easily dismissed. It's a hypothetical. What is it that my brain is doing that's influencing everything that I see around me that's, that should be random? The news should be random, right? Because things have popped off here and there, etc., and you have a... Uh, certain channels will be focused on particular issues. So, like National Geo will be focused on Kilauea and the the volcanoes that are erupting right now, for example. But that's in my feed. Now, am I am I making volcanoes erupt? Am I making planets align? To some degree, I think not. Okay, but we're definitely part of the experience of encoding that information. So here's, 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 a, here's a sort of more concrete way of, of thinking about it. So in this very turbulent set of parameters, what you're doing as an organism is you're trying to absorb all this information. And, and, and as an organism, you're trying to get from moment to moment, meal to meal, day to day, and you're encoding what was a successful behavior between point A to point B, right? And there's an there's almost like an infinite number of, of pathways and synapses that that could be uh, played out through with respect to moving towards uh, a target, right? So you can, if you think, well, you know, beyond sort of reflexive acts, but if you think I need to go and get whatever it is that you need at that particular time, you need to go get a Coke, right? then there's a whole set of sequences that 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 kick into uh, effect to 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 make that happen sure now what happens is is that they tend to if it's a success right so you know that uh, you know so you, you imagine just sort of you wake up and you know that the act of standing up getting on your trousers and a jacket usually there'll be some change and you can walk not so far and you'll find somewhere hopefully there's enough change in the jacket that that behavior says oh that will get me the, the coca-cola right that is a um that's a, a a tiny fragment of the patterns that play out on, on a sort of larger scale now the thing that the thing that bothers me with respect to obviously the brain and consciousness interact at this very fundamental level to coordinate the uh, so so we can think about the meta action of going to get a coke down to the uh, the smallest reaction uh, the smallest reactions that are involved in that and as a uh, neurophysiologist that goes down to the balance of ions across a uh, semi permeable membrane. 
and that happens at varying rates and speeds um, across the across your sort of organism and depending on specific boundary conditions and organ systems will depend on the speed with which that's relayed and we seem to have adapted uh, over whatever time frame you want to put on it but I don't think it's 5,000 years I think you know, the evidence is such that we can go much much further back with respect to how long human beings have been here oh certainly we, yeah. we're, um, and that, and that's that's a, a, a ties into this discussion as well because if we start saying well okay we understand that we've been here for a long time and th there seems to be this cyclical component to existence and this there's this uh, in, uh there's this thing embedded in in you know so what would be the Jungian um collective unconscious or what i would argue is is the uh ex experience encoded into your biology and you know the closest we've got to sort of understanding that is sort of gene regulatory networks etc with how we see something pass from one generation to another right i would even argue that it goes much much deeper than that but what we what we can see as sort of organized is what we understand to be sort of uh, genetic uh, material of one form or another and now what we what we have to deal with is we have to rattle up and down these these scales where we sort of sit in this sweet spot between the middle where if we with our will and learning we can go down and we can if we want to measure individual ions passing across the membrane right because this is sort of the closest we can get to an approximation of what's causal with respect to our uh, behavior and emotional state it's it's all about ion passage and the 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 structure of ions around a system, and I would I try to make the argument that that ion structure is essentially it's in effect it's a it's a hologram if you like, right? you can sort of see it under certain circumstances and uh, others you know depending on the situation you can't but your, your extended self is is built upon multiple layers, but at a fundamental, at its most fundamental, it's literally the, the force of interaction of ions of different types, and then those ions, you know, extend up into what we understand to be um, uh, biochemistry, et cetera, et cetera. It's not a... Um, the whole everything a is a vibration kind of idea. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. And um, and there's, there's, of course, there's a lot of physics a lot of very very intelligent people brought us to that point of understanding right even even sort of like the heisenberg interpretation of, of physics that the, the observer has to sort of has an impact on the experiment so it's it's implicitly understood that we that's sort of what we do okay so so if we can establish that as a sort of scientific fact and then we can then say well okay can we take that heuristic and apply it to uh, social constructs and emergent uh, re I don't want to say reality, but uh, the the way things are organized as we see them at, at this particular moment. We we then have to ask how often, if we take, for example, that we've been walking on this planet for a, a few hundred thousand years, how many times have we got to this point? Or something approximating this point that it seems resonant enough within the the what you could think of as your genetic memory i don't like using that term because people have a job thinking beyond the genes themselves and um the yeah there's a lot of uh, a lot of complicated implications in that it, it, and again it comes down to so this is and so this plays into um what I, what I so when I talk about the particular haplogroup that seems to be sitting in all these uh, very important positions right now uh, that uh, have strong implications for those of us uh, subject to uh, their machinations, the um, the same is true in Asia. Right, there the, there are there are long long family bloodlines that just go back into time that we don't fully uh, fully understand what that really means right um you know the, I, I guess the closest that we would um 
Uh, okay, I'll get to that in the chat in a second. Um, but uh, and the closest approximation we have in sort of uh, the Western sense is this idea of sort of blue bloods. Right? Sure. There's this royal lineage that that's been passed down from uh, past immemorial, and, and there's a uh, you can argue that there's an evolutionary advantage in this how would you say in in enabling a culture to propagate across spans of time now we we're not sure that, like time is this very difficult uh metric to really sort of uh, pin things on because yes we can sort of look at constants right that's that's in physics that sort of makes sense and what i want to try to do is is try to instantiate that principle that the same happens in biology with respect to sort of consciousness as well right and and there's there's a there's islands of stability that we know that we should be aiming for in order to be able to optimally survive what are these sort of perilous um moments right the week yes big uh yes big uh, i do apologize everyone i'm no problem at all i did what i could to entertain chat while you were gone okay so we made the numbers go up We've got 51 uh watching so uh the, where were we so i was kind of sort of you were talking, talking about, about uh, we... something along the lines of genetic memory among haplogroups and how that uh yeah, so how, so how information and stability is propagated across time, right? And so this is, <laughs> so this is where we get very much into the, uh, the, the here and now. So <laughs> there's a, how would you say, uh, there's, a, there's a rhyme and rhythm to everything. And it, it, it literally depends on where you are uh, in the world. Right, that's that's the that's the sort of um, uh, the, the the critical point that that needs sort of understanding. And I don't want to get too much into bogged down with, with respect to relativity, but more sort of thinking about the the heuristics that happen at the, the social level. And the it can be sort of summed up that the Chinese have this very long history that they understand, and they've got a long written history that they've they've recorded all these things that we're kind of talking about, okay? And, you know, their, their way of conceptualizing it might be uh, somewhat um, difficult to comprehend. And it's the same with the Japanese, and it's why they're sort of, they're, they're, their language structure and thinking is different to the Western way of sort of viewing uh, the, the world. Right, and a lot of that is sort of embedded into the language and proto language that's used, and that sort of helps wire the brain, and that's how they sort of uh, gauge towards or, or, or tend towards probabilities of behaviour that we recognise. And this is this is part of the weaponization of this information that's being used in these current circumstances. Is that they know that the, the people that want to try to leverage this particular set of circumstances want to leverage against uh the uh, this this principle and it's understood implicitly and passed down in writings and tales within different cultures okay show me a culture that's extant today and you'll find some form of history that goes back that says hey you know what uh you, you want to keep your, you know, together at some sort of level, and you, you know, you get told stories as a child as to you know, the the consequences of that. I don't know um, how how that relates now in in a in, in a much more modern context, because because when I was a kid, and I don't know about you, but um, a lot of our time wasn't spent with computers or TVs. It was like you were being told stories. Yeah, I was, you, you I was personally lucky to enough to be from an era that uh, television was there all my life, but video games really had only just come about when I was a, a kid. So, well, right. that's not really so, accurate. They actually came about in the 70s, but I mean, they really kind of came into their own with Nintendo and that sort of thing where 
you were dealing with something kind of different than what had been before. But... Yeah, but it, I mean, even then, there was only it was only compelling to a certain extent. Or, well, that right? that and there was no internet, so that that's the big game changer, really. Yes. Yeah. Uh, very much so. And and what it's done in a way is it's also opened up how everyone kind of operates. So suspicions that existed before get amplified. Okay. And so this is this is why I try to sort of um, as as much as I try to sort of lays what I think are uh, culprits or, or, or culprits or, or pathological ways of thinking that in I would sort of in in the eastern way of thinking would be kind of lack of wisdom right i think that's a sort of fair assumption that they don't have this idea of good and evil like that that's embedded in the abrahamic faith i would push that i would push that argument forward and it's kind of well that's not really uh, an unreasonable statement considering you know uh, every culture has their mores and their norms and if you really look into it they can differ quite significantly you know yeah, something that is gonna... viewed in america as just evil up until well, just recently would uh you know be considered some and some tribal practices uh, completely normal mm. yeah and and suddenly we're dealing in a world where uh, they let the floodgates open, and if we consider that there's a malign force, and in, in this, in, depending on where you sort of extrapolate out to, um, what might, from our perspective, be evil might just be the the co corrective force in nature that's hoovering up something, right? So you know, you don't you don't blame the shark for eating the surfers, right? But the surfer that's being eaten by the shark is going to think that shark's pretty evil right at that point, right? And this is the this is this mechanism that um, we're having to deal with right now. So if if we take a so right from uh, abstracting it, we're dealing with earth changing events. It's being wrapped in the concept of uh, a pandemic. This pandemic ties into this very ancient fear that we have that we know that these unknown things these enemies that, that normally through most of our history were invisible we didn't know what it was that we just knew that that village over the mountain you don't go there because that got wiped out right and anyone that goes there seems to seems to get possessed and you know, <laughs> shuffles off there it wasn't that long ago that we would put it in that context and framework Certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And so that's you, you're kind of sort of seeing that as you're watching. So I guess it's the sort of Joe Rogan argument that we're monkeys messing with this, uh, this new technology. But we don't fully understand the implications of it yet. That that is absolutely correct. A lot of people they've. Um, I guess the best way to say it is we've got an incredibly powerful set of tools and we don't even know how to fully use them much less realize mm. their implications on us. Mm. And but there's a caveat to that. And that is there are people who have been studying continuously. So there's particular, you know, we know we, we know that there are certain types that are geared towards particular uh professions if you like. And I guess this is the uh, that's best illustrated with the uh what's the Biblical tale. So this is where you know I have a weakness with respect to the, the the full understanding of the history as we understand it with uh, the Bible. But is it is it uh, Esau and Jacob and he gets his uh, inheritance taken away from his father because he pretends to be his brother, etc. And and and. In effect, in in those two brothers are these are these archetypes. The one that wants to sort of be outdoors is physical, and then there's the you could argue that the perhaps brainier, not brainier, but um, more used to operating in an environment where trying to gain advantage 
for wits. Yeah, that's that's probably a better way of thinking about it. So wits versus brawn, if you like, and that's the sort of uh, the the dichotomy that we have to live with as this uh, highly evolved primate, right? That we know that if you weigh three hundred pounds and can lift uh, a man up uh, and break him uh, in half, then usually that would for for millennia that was enough to make sure that you had sort of breeding rights but then you know we we know from just studying of uh chimpanzees that uh you can form relationships such that the, the two smaller chimpanzees will come to a understanding and attack the bigger one right so the, and then they'll share the 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 sort of spoils if you like and they don't have a spoken language as we sort of understand it Right, but that's a highly evolved behavior to be able to project that type of long-term planning, especially when you're talking about animals that are subject to uh, essentially reflexive type range of the moment responses. Sure, sure. It makes sense. So we go from that to, okay, now we, now we extrapolate out into this big picture environment and now we're now we're seeing and thanks to all, everyone chatting and talking and aggregating information online that people who were um you, you only had a limited number of hours with which to sort of study before that now the the average joe has, is gathering the amount of information that that, that would take uh, very studious scholars, uh, you know, not so long ago, a whole lifetime to sort of accrue with respect to information, and that information now is presented to you in a fashion that you can you can absorb it in, in incredibly fast. And so now that now you get to what would be the, uh, the the this power game that's going on, and I, I think it was fair to say we sort of reached a consensus around. Uh, the World Economic Forum as being a, a, a less than benign organization. Was that, was that, that's a fair assumption of where we sort of got to. Uh, I think anyone who doesn't have Danes on world domination can kind of come to that conclusion. But yeah. Right. So, but, but we now have to put it into the context of, well, we live in an era where the, the old ways of doing things as we understood them, which, you know, often was you send the men to fight and the women would hold the, the home, uh, the, the fires, the fire in the hearth, as it were. And um, we ca they can't do that now because they can be touched by their own technology, these malign forces. They're not malign, they're, they're competing forces. And I'm, I tend to be of the opinion that the that it's incumbent upon the universe to tend towards the good because it it's a, it's the it's the more it's the more successful environment in which life can propagate okay well, that, that makes so, sense an adversarial setting makes for a harder outcome and you know you look at what we've got and you can't have it destroying itself or we're gone and um the people who who would so those that had wits before where maybe they didn't have the brawn and were able to sort of convince or coerce people to go and uh, to sort of project their uh will and power onto the next tribe for example you know, try to use simple metaphors to try to sort of aggregate what it is that we're looking at with respect to um, the Great Reset World Econ e Economic Forum. This is not conspiracy. This is just matter of facts. Now, we're not uh, we're not dealing with a um, an unknown here. OK, and it might. Be, so this is the thing that I'm I'm wrestling with. At what point do we say or oh, do we is, are we stuck in the cycle of um, crushing each other's countries and then grinding each other uh, under uh, into dust like we did to Germany after the Second World War or you know this this sort of game of nations or or have these people realised that the, and like I say we I don't know how far you can go but the fact that we can talk about these particular individuals there's a whole bunch 
behind them that we don't know about. Oh, that absolutely. Are all operating in those. Oh, yeah. There's so names that, makes... that we don't know and may never know. Never ever know. That's that's the that's the whole that's the whole point of um, them sort of building these systems and and it's it's not even them building them. It's it's the property of the the reality in which energy has to move. Right. The, the a bee doesn't understand 3D spatial geometry yet. It it makes these honeycombs. Right, because it, it sort of that, that aids its uh, survivability, and it's it's the most uh, in terms of sort of making a compact space to accelerate the num the numbers you can have. If you try to pack spheres together, you get gaps, right, and so you lose active space. But the, the, it's it's not like the bee un uh, understands the importance of the you know the angle between the the interfaces of the honeycomb it's making it's just inherent in it and you could argue that that's inherent in every system that we're looking at including what are these social systems and go back to this idea of it being entities that are just essentially forces of nature that are operating at scales that we don't fully comprehend and the emergent properties that we're seeing right now is this world economic forum and uh, there would be an argument made against this it's it's a sort of collectivism versus the rugged individuality that's supposed to be the epitome of the uh the white western um sphere i would argue and you know that, that was sort of codified in the uh, the declaration of independence and and uh, civil rights but yeah, that uniquely yeah, Western that, point of view. It, it is, it is unique, especially if you live in Asia and you, you know, you you're outside of that system and you 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 um, you see those those differences, right? It's harder to see when you're in the system than when you're looking out from it or, or, or looking out onto it or in. Sorry, you're outside of it and looking into it. Okay. And right now, from from the Eastern perspective, the chaos in the West just looks nuts. It it looks nuts, but you know what? They they they're of the opinion of oh, it's that's kind of just how they do things, right? And they will they will take advantage of it as best they can, and each group will take advantage of it as best they can. And you can um, you can go back into the into the depths of time and and we know who these groups are that are going to be trying to vie for power and it might be that these people literally believe on on instantiating heaven on earth that they're they're going to share their particular uh faith with one another and you can look at the, you know there's um i think it's in azerbaijan where they're there is it azerbaijan no kazakhstan or something you know it's in like one of those deep asian countries where they've built these cities with sort of uh, multi-faith uh, um, areas, right, and temples. That, that uh, oh, I have to. It's slipping me right now. And uh, oh, I think I know what you're talking about, and I can't remember either. Yeah, and I think I think it's in Kazakhstan. But, uh, but uh, oh, I know exactly anyway, what you're talking it, about. But, I heard an NPR special on that, and I can't remember it for the life of me. But you know, it, in in this uh, completely desolate but not desolate but remote part of the planet out of out of the, the sort of the emergent out of it is this uh, this city for the 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 21st century and are we like those people that are that are arguing and i'm arguing against it because i th I, I, I'm, I worry about people rushing in right and trying to force the hand of god right and these that there are people that are trying to play God right now. And the problem is, it's very, very easy, excuse me, to look at the current circumstances and say, oh, you know what, everyone around the pandemic that we can paint a target onto, including those elements that are, that are, that are doing the most obvious thing, which is gorging themselves like pigs at the trough, have this linkage at the top <laughs> and you know it's it's very obvious where you can take this conversation and i'm just i'm just trying to be very very circumspect right now because i don't want to be taken down off youtube right because look 20 more people listening to me on average and taking home this message 
is a lot better than the 20 to 30 people if I'm on my backup channel. Right, that's that's uh, in terms of information warfare. That's a that's a big difference, right? And it's a it's a committed audience that follows what it is that we that I'm that we're doing. I mean, you're part of this process. You've been talking to me for months now, right? Oh, certainly, yeah. And and so, um, where where are we along that sort of arc or swing of the, uh, the pendulum? Is a sort of I mean, people get the metaphor, but it's it's much more than a it's a way more complex movement of interacting parts. But where are we in that process? And my my take home view right now is is I see a concerted attack against what I consider one of the more stabilizing forces within uh, within world history, and it's very very obvious who those parties are that are coming after that. Uh, that stability, which I'm a part of, and I should be giving my in-group preference to, and this is the whole point. This is what it comes down to at, at its at its very uh, basic level. You are allowed to have this in-group preference. We know all those other groups have it, but for some reason, it's a, well. We know the reason. It's obvious, it, and people. I'm. It's not like this is new information for people, but there's been this particular undermining of Western um, civilization by a very concerted group of entities, for want of a better vernacular. No, that's a now, good way of again, putting it. Um, so again, where do we sit along that process? And how is that process with operating within bigger cycles that we're, that we're working within? Right, so you you can, you know, it can, a few hundred years ago, you'd wake up in the morning, you'd fight in the morning, break, and then win, and then in the afternoon, you'd fight, you'd lose and retreat, etc. And that's how life used to be. And then the dark would come, etc. And that would sort of uh, instantiate its own higher order rhythm. And I I don't think we really fully understand the the higher order rhythms that are going to play down at this level that we're sort of subject to and again this ties into this uh, this element of where consciousness sits in this equation and how we as and, and again well, i don't want to say with like I, I use the metaphor that we're we're at the bottom we're not at the bottom we're just the the conscious milieu in which all this is happening right and there's there's elements within that within those systems that I wouldn't, I, I personally am glad that I'm not part of it. I could aim towards them if I wanted to, if I wanted to be that CEO type and I wanted to be taking home those millions of dollars and those families and those bloodlines. But they live, I think, very, very restrictive lives. They may, they may have opulent lives, but it's very restrictive. It, it looks a very sort of paranoid way of thinking. And I think most people, it's, and it's, it's, you could argue that it's the extent of psychopathy and sociopathy within a particular group, that at the larger level, that's what you're dealing with. And it's not, it's not, a, uh, it's not a, uh, a fixed constant. It's somewhat variable at, ver at various points of the, the, the cycle that you're operating in, if that makes sense. Uh, I suppose I understand where you're coming from there, yeah. Yeah. So, so at at that point, we we now have to step back and say, okay, what are we doing now, right? If if the, if all these global mechanisms are kicking off, and we're the observers in that, what are we what are we doing? And I know, I know we had this uh, kind of sort of black pilled conversation uh, the last time we spoke, where the consequences of it sort of sp having a spasm through the the societal fabric of the united states way way bigger than what it is that we're dealing with right now and there were there are people that would try to accept well people would try to accelerate it and there are some that would try to stop it and i'm uh, i'm now just watching the experiment play out because I can I can make hypotheses and try to explain to people yeah it's, you know it's kind of 
it's kind of natural it's you know you are involved in a sense because we're all watching it and we all contribute etc but right now it's like the roulette wheel is spinning and we've just got to hold our breath to see where everything sort of drops into place and th this was a question i was thinking about just asking you because um i haven't i don't know what's going on within the united states with respect to the presidency as far as i'm aware um he's supposed to be coming out but uh that looks like that's not to be the case well uh, i i guess the best i can do is provide one window on things because it's incredibly complicated and things aren't happening in the way that they have in over a hundred years so the long and short of the story is there have been a number of legal cases that have been brought but have been dismissed on thin grounds or on procedural grounds, on uh, some kind of statute, uh, or it seems there's no judicial will to try and uh, tackle these issues, which are legitimate constitutional issues. There are... Um, uh, the Constitution, to put it simply, says you can't have any kind of voting other than fully authorized absentee voting, and I believe that was an addition later, or in-person voting. So any of the mail-in voting is... Prima facie, just right out the gate, completely unconstitutional. So there's been a lot of uh, talk about we don't want to disenfranchise X million voters. But by that same notion, many of these have been put in place, not only, not merely on its face in unconstitutional ways, but have been put in essentially by fiat. You know, these things haven't, uh, a lot of them haven't even seen court, and the courts are refusing to even take the cases. That's mm -hmm. merely one angle. Uh, beyond that, then we also have another, which will be coming up uh, about two weeks when they actually go to do the count. There are two sets of, uh, there's 400 electoral votes, and from most of the states, there is one set of electoral votes being sent from either six or seven states now. There are two sets of electors sent. Between them, either one could determine the final result. So it, it really could still go either way, and that will be determined... If I'm to understand the process correctly, Mike Pence will get those final votes and he can decide to throw out either set or both sets and send it back down, I think, then to a state-by-state -state vote or to send it to the Supreme Court, and they would have to see it then. So that's a second angle. Now, there's also a third angle as well. The uh, Texas case that was brought forward stating that uh, the way these elections were handled in other states disenfranchised Texas voters, and then that one got a number of other states involved, as well as uh, President Trump himself, and I want to say some 130 to 160 uh, senators in addition. That case... So I, 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 hmm? I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but because I've only got a small window in which the comments appear, and... I just want to inject this into what you're talking about right now. So yeah. the mayor says, Trump is smarter than war. That's media BS. I think he'll back off and come back 2024. I mean, that I would say that would be a fair assumption to make under normal circumstances. But in the context of what we're looking at, at the, if you just put it in, in the pandemic terms, if that's a agent that's being released deliberately, I don't think... The, the, I don't think the normal procedures are going to last for another four years to allow Trump to uh, make a, a, 
another election. Yeah, if, if things aren't handled now, they might not be able to be handled through legitimate means in the future. Hmm. To put it and, simply. And so this... And, um, but, yeah, so it, it's, it's a very, very difficult set of circumstances with, um, you know, I, I take the mickey out of, uh, you know, foil on our channel just for, you know, screaming at cameras about getting guns, etc. Um, and I don't want to see that because I think there's, you know, we are nations of laws eventually because I... And kind of of the opinion that, that, with respect to what I was saying before, the breaking of the rules of the game, even though people do break them, people deep down know the consequences of of doing that. And so in, in, in trying to look at it, like looking down a microscope, um, I expect to see a sort of, you know, the, a switch of the systems that would kick in to stop the worst predations that you know are used uh to to get people to side on on a particular political side for example um but yeah i like i said what the point i was getting at is that i don't know right now this is the thing i don't know and all, all, all i could advise is wait and uh, uh, um, well, you're you're dependent on what these entities do, right? It's the ball is in the air. It is. It is. That's completely accurate. And mm -hmm. one of the things that um, that a lot of people here in the states are finding vexing is that uh, Trump himself has quite a few avenues by which he could approach this and he seems to be only taking the ones that involve the court and he could really i mean he could he's got the insurrection act he's got his own executive order that he signed two years ago he's got any number of horrifying of powers that were set forth by george bush and barack obama mm. that could all be enacted and he seems to um he seems He's to be avoiding them. them right? Now, that being said, yeah. I've read some very interesting things on the topic that it it appears he's been intentionally surrounded by people that really don't want him to use any of his real powers. Mm. For what reason, who could say? But, I mean, we can probably, you know, put some guesses out there because if, if these problems are resolved, it... Uh, changes things kind of around the yeah. world maybe because it would put a lot of power back into people's hands because if the elections are free in the biggest place and the ones responsible for this kind of uh, chicanery are not allowed to act it could have a cascade kind of effect and set forward a bit of a, not necessarily an American freedom, certainly, because every place is different, but could uh, reset things for other cultures as well. Mm. So yeah. it's, um, and, and that's a thing that a lot of watching. people understand right now, too. Mm. So there's a lot of electricity in the air. Mm. So if... Yeah. Um, if this goes through as it currently is and nothing is resolved, the simplest answer is uh, there will be violence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, man, sometimes that needs to happen. Yeah, trees uh, of liberty, as they say. Yeah, and I would say, again, I just fall back onto right now, uh, if you're just average Joe, just listening to this or chat or channels like this, and uh, you're you're not part of an organized, <laughs> they, they, they they thought about this deeply, right? Militia, etc. Right? The you know they know they know the language that the West uses. Um, sit back, enjoy Christmas, man. Sit back, uh, enjoy the turkey that you got.
and uh, be thankful and just watch, right? Because we're not we're not the active participants at this stage. We're the we're the conscious observers of this system progressing through its its movements, right? And yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I can't be. I can't be for the, <laughs> the watering of the tree uh, just quite yet. Well, no, that's absolutely I, right. I mean, I mean, what needs to happen is every legal recourse that is available should be taken because that is, at the end of the day, the right thing to do. Mm. Because if everything yeah. can be resolved in a completely legitimate fashion that is completely above board and beyond reproach, even though it is beyond reproach, it will be you know, hated and despised because, you know, there's uh, there are parties that are actively interested in barring freedom from large groups of others for whatever their reason might be, be it greed, lust for power, whatever. And, you know, to take so, that from them uh, is... I just want to bring the chat in here. So uh, this is a black pill from the chat from Yuri saying, thinking that this will be resolved is hopium. The system is beyond reparation. Uh, I would respond to that by saying I don't. I, I'm. I'm not sure that we're talking about it being resolved in uh, like the fairy tale ending. It's just the case that there's a change uh, uh, happening, and all we can do is watch that change and do our best to uh, to roll with it at the moment. Because you're not going down the Pentagon, or you're not going down. Uh, to the Tiananmen Square and, and and dragging these people out just yet, right? Things things are not at, at that point. And anyone that's telling you that that it is uh, is an agent provocateur at this point. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Uh, <laughs> gotta be, you know, you're in a minefield and and just tread real, real careful. And that means you know, keep your mouth shut point you know get the information out that you need to and there's no need for other people right now to expose yourself to uh publicly when people like myself have come forward to speak about these matters right and like i say this will be a niche message right and you can hopefully word of mouth will get around that uh, there is some sanity prevailing uh on uh on on the internet and um we as a as this uh group this that this stable this stable entity that's a, that's been enabled by by the internet basically but we have to get through the um uh, the next weeks to um months to to see what's coming down the pipeline anyone prognosticating beyond the immediate right now is uh, is is looking to probably um Yeah, probably doesn't have your best interests at heart, I would say. That's a very real possibility. Basically, uh, the only people that should be Fed posting right now are Feds. So leave it to them. Mm. Uh, yes, and um, yeah, and I, I think on that point, I think we should uh, wrap it up because I don't, I don't want to be accused of um, <laughs> engaging in those behaviors beyond the. Um, well, all we're doing is having a conversation and some speculation at this point. And let's honestly hope that it doesn't go beyond that, because I do not want my dear Republic to be in flames. No. And look, man, <laughs> so if, if, like, given the choice, I wish I was, you know, Montana was where I wanted to be. Right. And um, instead, I'm here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't want to say, you know, I feel like all the last vestiges of uh good america you know just i arrived just after 9 11 and um th there was still that sense of you know the republic and the history and you know that and even though it was a new country it was understood as a continuation of the uh, the western philosophical narrative and the um the the western how ethic? do we uh, sorry said again the western ethic 
Like the Western ethic, I, I, it's it's too precious to lose. But also at that same time, we should not be um, imposing ourselves onto other people's ethics too much. Root out, make sure your ethics are protected by all means. Have that in group preference. Hold people to account. Do everything that we should be doing um, to make sure that you know there's continuity continuity of family yeah that's a good that's a good way to sort of end the discussion i think so continuity of family and take this time this christmas time to um if you've if you're in this situation where you've been separated and you can't get to family use that as a learning situation right now i, I would put forward Try to try to reappraise what it is that you're shaping your life around, such that uh, your in group is successful to an extent, right? And do it in as gentlemanly and ladylike fashion as you possibly can. Even though I don't, uh, I don't particularly uh, do that at times. You know, there's a there's a time for uh, jousting on the internet. There's also a time for sort of uh, serious uh, dialogue, and um, well, and now, right is now is the time for talking and watching. Now, that being said, if you're in America and you are free, even if things have been resolved before the sixth, go down to uh, go down to DC if you can. I might even try and make it myself because that that show of support will mean really quite a lot it's a um yeah optics don't matter but yeah optics do matter mm. I, I, all i would add to that is uh under the circumstances uh wear a mask <laughs> yes yes <laughs> absolutely out by practice the, by the, all, by the <laughs> yeah absolutely practice all of your proper techniques imagine that uh your hands are uh you know covered in poison and Take a but real you're doing mask. Under wartime, you're doing it under wartime conditions. That's yes. how you have to look at it. Exactly that. Right? And, and take the appropriate steps and measures. So, uh, Evan, with really pleasure, I can I can hear the kids getting. It's five thirty, and the wife's about to walk through the door. Oh, um, it's it's about dinner time. I, I will it. not keep you from it. So. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a dinner. It's the fact that I haven't done my uh, my duties for the day, and oh, uh, husband thing has to I'm happen. Them, <laughs> it's, best, it's best I'm not uh, gassing on in front of the computer, and uh, uh, the 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 wrath comes uh, comes back Completely home. Completely so, understood. Um, <laughs> well, then I guess I should say Merry Kurisa Masu, and uh, I'll gather. <laughs> and you have a wonderful uh, a wonderful seasonal evening uh here in a couple days then make yes, sure and get your I, I hope you've got your kfc bucket uh saved right <laughs> uh we don't we don't have kfc here but um oh, so sad so let's fried 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 chickens on the restaurant uh on on the menu anyway for tonight perfect, so, perfect um, sir. well we anyway chicken. merry Thank christmas and yeah and thanks for everybody for listening and well we'll all talk to you all again soon no doubt yeah, and there will be a soon, folks. Enjoy Christmas. That's what I would say. Enjoy Christmas. And let's say, if you've been separated from family, just remember how that feels and make sure it doesn't happen again. Right? So uh, take care. God bless. And I will see everyone in the next stream. And good to be back on the main channel. So take care, guys. Toodles and Merry Christmas.